Most people usually think the hard part of hardware development is getting a prototype to work. So once the board powers up, the sensors read correctly, and the firmware mostly works, well, it feels like the finish line is finally in sight. But that's the biggest misconception in hardware. A working prototype doesn't mean you're close to production because the transition from a custom PCB that works on your bench to a product that can be manufactured at scale is an entirely different phase. Unfortunately, in the majority of cases, that transition takes just as long to get right as the original product development did. And to be clear, I'm assuming you've got your own custom PCB and not an early proof of concept prototype based on a dev kit. And even when you have a custom board that works well, it's usually still not ready for manufacturing at a level where you can confidently build thousands of units. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through 10 hidden steps that sit between a working custom PCB prototype and a product that can actually be manufactured at scale. These are steps many founders don't really understand until they're already deep into the process, and skipping them is one of the main reasons products stall between prototype and production. Hi, I'm John Teal. I was a former microchip design engineer for Texas Instruments. I developed and launched my own hardware product into hundreds of retail stores, and now I help others do the same through my Hardware Academy and private mentoring program. Okay, let's get started. Hidden step number one, freeze the engineering design. Once your custom PCB prototype works, the engineering design needs to stop moving. This means you're no longer tweaking features, making quick layout improvements, or introducing mechanical changes that seem small, but end up cascading into manufacturing issues. Manufacturing depends on stability. If the schematic keeps changing, if the layout continues to get adjusted, if the enclosure design evolves, or if the firmware behavior is still shifting, everything downstream becomes unpredictable. Tooling can't be finalized. Documentation won't stabilize. Test processes aren't locked down and factories struggle to commit to a repeatable build. This is hard for new founders because each individual change usually feels pretty minor on its own, but taken together, they prevent the design from getting to a stable point. Freezing the design marks the transition from development to manufacturing setup, and without that freeze, every other step becomes slower, more expensive, and harder to manage. Now, I know most of these hidden steps I'm sharing in this video are going to feel pretty overwhelming to most people, and that's exactly why I put together a PDF checklist that lays out all 10 of these hidden steps between prototype and production that I'm covering in this video. This PDF gives you something that you can reference later instead of trying to keep all of this in your head as I'm talking. You can find the link in the description below or scan this QR code right here. Hidden step number two, design for manufacturing or DFM. A prototype that functionally works isn't the same thing as a product that can be manufactured consistently and economically. Your board may function perfectly on the bench, but manufacturing introduces its own constraints. For example, minimum trace width, solder mask spacing, component placement rules, enclosure tolerances, Panelization requirements and assembly clearances are easy to overlook during development. Engineers naturally optimize for performance and functionality, while manufacturers instead focus on repeatability and yield. When those priorities aren't reconciled early, problems show up later as rework, delays, and increased cost. If a design isn't optimized for manufacturing, scaling becomes difficult and unpredictable. Now, design for manufacturing isn't something you clean up at the end of your design. It's a fundamental part of designing a product that can be built reliably over and over again. Hidden step number three is sourcing and supply chain validation. Prototypes are usually built using parts that are easy to purchase in small quantities, but production requires a much higher level of scrutiny. A component that was readily available during development might suddenly have long lead times, unstable pricing, or a single source supply chain that introduces unnecessary risk for you. Many teams only discover this after the design's locked down, which is when changes become a lot more painful to make. Validating your supply chain early helps prevent forced redesigns 
it keeps cost under control, and it reduces the likelihood of production delays caused by component availability. This work isn't exactly very exciting to do, I know, but it plays a major role in whether your product can scale smoothly in production. Now, real quick, before I continue, I just want to acknowledge that I know all of this can seem really overwhelming, especially if you're seeing these steps laid out clearly for the first time. And this is why I usually recommend founders focus on getting a working prototype largely on their own or with a small team, often funded through personal savings or friends and family. That early phase is about proving the concept and validating the market. But once you're ready to move from prototype to mass production, it usually means partnering with manufacturers, bringing in experienced engineers, and as much as possible, using other people's money to scale responsibly. Some founders can handle very low volume production themselves, but meaningful scale almost always requires collaboration and specialized expertise. For my own product, I got it to the prototype stage myself. Then I used that prototype to get a major retailer to express interest. And then with that interest, I was able to convince a manufacturing partner to fund most of the steps that I'm discussing in this video. Okay, hidden step number four is designed for test or DFT. Now testing a single prototype is pretty straightforward, but testing thousands of units introduces a very different set of requirements. At scale, you need test pads designed into the PCB, a test jig or fixture that interfaces with the board reliably, firmware test modes that can exercise each subsystem quickly, built-in pass and fail logic, and a final functional test that verifies the entire unit before it leaves the production line. The goal of DFT is to make sure your product can be tested thoroughly, consistently, and at scale so that every unit that ships has actually been verified to work the way that you expect. If your testing process is incomplete or inconsistent or too slow, then defects will eventually make their way into the field and those failures are far more costly than catching issues during manufacturing. Test time also matters a lot more than many founders expect. Even an extra 10 seconds per unit turns into hours of additional production time as volume increases, which directly impacts throughput and unit cost. A well-designed test strategy lets you test every unit properly without destroying margins or slowing the production line. Hidden step number five, design for certification. Certifications aren't something that you simply apply for at the end of a project. The product itself needs to be designed from the start to meet regulatory requirements. Designing for certification means accounting for EMC behavior, grounding strategies, filtering, isolation distances, antenna placement, and shielding early enough that problems can be addressed without major redesigns. Many certification failures are predictable when you look at them from an engineering perspective and can usually be avoided by designing with regulatory requirements in mind from the start. Now, if certifications feel confusing, I do have a certification tool that lays out which ones you're going to need and what they're typically going to cost, and that's linked to in the description below. Okay, hidden step number six, reliability and stress testing. Reliability problems rarely appear when you only have a handful of prototypes because small sample sizes hide issues that emerge at volume. Once you start building more units, then patterns begin to show up. You might see connectors loosen under vibration, solder joints crack after repeated stress, sensors drift over time, thermal hotspots appear once the enclosure is sealed, or materials that behave differently under humidity and temperature cycling than expected. These issues aren't unusual, and they're not signs the design is necessarily bad. They're the natural result of exposing a product to real-world conditions across enough units to reveal weaknesses. Reliability testing exists to uncover these problems early when they can still be addressed without customer impact. Hidden step number seven, firmware for manufacturing. The firmware used during development is rarely suitable for production. Manufacturing firmware needs to boot predictably, support automated test routines, handle calibration and serialization, integrate cleanly with test fixtures, and operate without manual intervention. It has to behave consistently so the production process stays fast and repeatable. 
Treating manufacturing firmware as a separate engineering effort helps avoid slow testing, inconsistent results, and unnecessary complexity on the production line. Hidden step number eight, test fixture development. Now, test fixtures are the secret product inside your product, and many founders underestimate how critical they are. A test fixture provides a repeatable physical and electrical interface that lets each unit be tested quickly and consistently in production. Whether it's a simple pogo pin fixture or a more advanced automated system, the goal is the same. Reliable contact, predictable behavior, and minimal test time. Fixtures are essential for a scalable production. They're one of the most effective ways to improve quality, reduce test time, and maintain consistency as volume increases. Hidden step number nine is production validation. Production needs to be validated in stages, and each stage has a specific purpose. Engineering validation testing, or EVT, focuses on confirming the core electronics work as intended under expected operating conditions. Then there's design validation testing, or DFT, and this evaluates the complete product, including the enclosure, the materials, assembly methods, environmental performance, and reliability. This is typically where certification testing happens because the design's close enough to final form to produce meaningful results. Then the third stage of production validation is production validation testing, or PVT. And this confirms the manufacturing line itself is ready, ensuring assembly, testing, and manufacturing yields are stable before scaling volume. Skipping or compressing these three stages often leads to yield problems, late redesigns, and expensive rework. Now, before step 10, if you haven't grabbed the PDF checklist with all of these hidden steps yet, it's in the description below. Hidden step number 10, quality assurance and yield optimization. Now, when production first begins, some variability always appears. Components are going to drift, processes will introduce small inconsistencies, and real-world conditions will expose edge cases that weren't obvious during development. Yield optimization is the process of identifying patterns in those issues, refining the design or processes, improving tests, and repeating the cycle until results stabilize. This iterative refinement is how products mature from fragile prototypes into reliable, scalable systems. High yield isn't accidental. It's earned through repeated cycles of testing, learning, and optimization across engineering, manufacturing, and quality control. If you'd like help transitioning your product from prototype to production, you can get help through the Hardware Academy or my private mentoring program. And if you found this video helpful, then I suggest you watch this one next, which is all about the unexpected costs that no one warns you about when scaling a new hardware product.